Hello everyone. Today I want to speak a bit about the basic editing features with Meerkat. Although Meerkat is not intended to act as a replacement for any serious vector graphic program like Inkscape, for instance, you still have quite a lot of very sophisticated editing features that help you to fine-tune your design before you burn it on your laser. So let's have a quick look at that. We may, you may rec recall from the different videos that you have, may have already watched on Meerkat that Meerkat has here a design page where you can find different shapes, basic shapes that, can, that you can choose to draw. So for instance, I'm just clicking on this one. I'm clicking here and just in drawing a simple triangle, ending it with a double click, indicating that this is the last point I wanted to use. And now I have that triangle here on my screen. I have a rectangle here as well, and we do a bit of working with the two of these. So the very first thing you should do, you always, after you have finished creating something, you can click on Select, which brings Meerkat back into basic selection and editing mode. If you have clicked on an element like this or like that, you will see a couple of interesting information. The first thing is, let me just make it slightly smaller, that you can see the stuff. It shows you um, a surrounding rectangle around the shape. Here it might be simple to see. It gives you the indicator of how far away from the top edge of your, of your um, canvas the element is placed, how far from the left. It gives an indicator of the size of it, 45 mil in height, 35 mil in width. And you do see a couple of small elements over here, those rectangles and those small uh, curve over here that indicate you can do something with that. Let's start first with the, the mo most basic that you won't move to stuff around. If you go over with your mouse over the central one, you see that your mouse button is changing shape. You just click on it, hold your left mouse button pressed, and you can drag the element to a new position. You release it, and it will fall back on the canvas. If you click here on one of these buttons here on the left and right side or on the top and bottom, you will actually change, not surprisingly, you know that from other programs, the size of the element. If you do click here on one of the corner buttons, it will change the size as well while maintaining the ratio of width and height while rescaling the element. If you do want to change that while doing this, you can actually hold the shift key. Sorry, the alt key. Apologies. I always bring I'm confused those things. You can click on the all while you click and press the alt key, you can actually change the size of the stuff in the appropriate direction. If you do click Control Shift while changing the size, you will see it actually it scales from the middle. So it scales it proportionally starting from the middle. While you normally you just change the size to one side. Okay, so much for scaling. I want to draw your attention to a small area here on the screen on the status bar. That is the status bar actually contains quite a lot of interesting features. We may want to speak about that in a different video, but here to the very right, you do have a couple of different small check marks and it states move, resize, rotate, skew. And if you click on those, you will see that the corresponding elements are going to appear or disappear. That is actually helpful because by default, there is one which you uh, normally don't use that often, which is Q. Just clicking on this one over here. And you do see two different additional elements have appeared over here. These handles, if you click on these, you will actually skew the thing. Might be easier to see it over here if you skew it. Maintains the basic shape and properties, but it will be just skewed either in X or in Y direction. 
that's normally not something you you need that often. So you have the opportunity to turn that off. Okay, click it off and put back, and it disappears. So let's speak about rotation. You at every four of the corners. You do have these small elements over here. If you click on it and hold, click and press the mouse button, the element will actually be rotated around the adjacent corner. So if you click on this one, it will be um, rotated around this one. If you click on this, uh, sorry, it will sorry it will rotate around the center, but you can change that. I will speak about that in a sec. Apologies. Hopefully, I haven't confused you too much. Once again, you click it over here, you will have the indicator of the of the angle that it uses. If you click the shift key, actually, it will rotate in for every five degrees. If you click the control key, it will actually only use it every 15 degrees, which makes it slightly simpler to just rotate it by 45 degrees or 90 degrees. Okay. So much for rotation. There is one additional feature. If you want, for instance, rotate something around a, a given center which lies outside of the element, for instance, you have a couple of that one, you want to rotate it around this corner over here, there is an opportunity to do that. For this, you need to actually to hide the move element over here. And then you have that small element over there. This is the rotation center which normally lies in the center of the element. I move this over here to that corner. And now I'm rotating the element around that new rotation origin. Okay. If I go back, click outside inside, it will jump back to the center because that's normally where you want to rotate elements around. Okay, so this is a very specific feature that you may want to use sometimes. The next thing that I want to draw your attention to, you may have seen, if I move something around, there are this small, there's this green arrow appearing over here, and there are slightly um, highlighted elements around the grid, which is actually the thing that Mirkut is using to snap elements to a certain position. For instance, if I move the center over here, if I do have the green arrow appearing, you will see it jumps to that position because that's normally what you want to have. You want to have it at a, at a given position. And that is being done here with the snap options. The snap options appearing here, by the way, if you don't have that, I just let it disappear for a moment. You have here in the panes different elements that you can actually that you can attach here to the left hand side or the top and bottom side of Meerkat. And the thing that you're lo looking for is under editing snap options over there. It states okay, snap to grid. Just turn that off. And you do see you can now you can move the element wherever you want, even in the middle. Um, of an area between the grid lines. Okay, turn it back on and it will move to this. Sometimes it's helpful to place an element directly on a corner, for instance, of another element. So in this case, you activate a snap to element option and then when that appears, you can see I made that bigger. Helping us a bit to see that better. So once again, I do that. And now you see oop, that may have not worked as I wanted. Let's repeat it. I have been too confusing. Ah, OK, I know what I'm doing here. Let's make this again slightly bigger because that was too confusing over here. Now you see that it's highlighting. It was actually hidden by the different um, grid points, which were too narrow, so it couldn't be identified. So now, if I click it over here, it will snap to the corner. That's sometimes useful if you want not only if you drag and drop, also while you generate a element. I'm clicking here line. 
you can see you don't have the opportunity here now it would actually attach to the to one grid point which is indicated by the small green arrow if you click here if you move the, the mouse further you will see it will also use certain certain things like okay the middle of a at the corner here or over there slightly different shape yep. and it will snap to this one so not used that often but if you need it very helpful normally my standard option is i turn the snap to element option off but i use the snap to grid by the way the very last thing i wanted to tell you about is the grid you do see whenever i'm zooming in into the the scene that the grid is automatically changing its resolution that's some um, that's most of the times helpful and useful sometimes it's a bit annoying because you do not want to have that in this case you can do one thing you do see over here you have the information about the different um, uh, distances every 10 20 30 50 40 minutes every 10 millimeters you have a line if you click here on the millimeter stuff where you have the unit click the right mouse button there is a thing coming up which is hidden in plain sight but still a very useful thing here you can see that you have an auto scale which, which was just a feature we were referring to or i wanted to have no i want to have a very fixed scale and resolution of the grid here for instance five millimeter and regardless of what you're doing the resolution of the grid remains identical which is sometimes quite useful once again if you want to bring it back to auto scale right mouse click here on that left top corner click it again on auto scale there is another thing which is useful which is i just want to um, draw your attention to which is a magnet i will speak about that in the next minute one of the next um, videos because that is already rather long I wanted to thank you for your attention. Hopefully that was useful and see you next time.